The three witnesses we have before this committee today collectively pose, I believe, the single greatest threat to free speech in America and the greatest threat we have to free and fair elections. Yesterday, I spent a considerable amount of time speaking with both Mr. Zuckerberg and Mr. Pichai. I have concerns about the behavior of both of their companies. I would note that Facebook is at the minimum at least trying to make some efforts in the direction of defending free speech. I appreciate their doing so. Google, I agree with the concerns that Senator Klobuchar raised. I think Google has more power than any company on the face of the planet. And the antitrust concerns are real. The impact of Google is profound. And I expect we will have continued and ongoing discussions about Google's abuse of that power and its willingness to manipulate search outcomes to influence and change election results. But today, I wanna to focus my questioning on Mr. Dorsey and on Twitter. Because of the three players before us, I think Twitter's conduct has by far been the most egregious. Mr. Dorsey, does Twitter have the ability to influence elections? No. You don't believe Twitter has any ability to influence elections? No, we are one part of a broad spectrum of communication channels that people have. So you're testified to this committee right now that, that, that Twitter, when it silences people, when it censors people, when it blocks political speech, that has no impact on elections? People, people have choice of other communication channels with which- not if, not if they don't hear information. If you don't think you have the power to influence elections, why do you block anything? Uh, well, we have policies that are focused on making sure that more voices on the platform are possible. We see a lot of abuse and harassment, which ends up silencing people and having them leave from the platform. All right, Mr. Dorsey, I find your opening questions, your opening answers absurd on their face. But let's talk about the last two weeks in particular. As you know, I have long been concerned about Twitter's pattern of censoring and silencing individual Americans with whom Twitter disagrees. But two weeks ago, Twitter and to a lesser extent, Facebook, crossed a threshold that is fundamental in our country. Two weeks ago, Twitter made the unilateral decision to censor the New York Post in a series of two blockbuster articles, both alleging evidence of corruption against Joe Biden, the first concerning Ukraine, the second concerning communist China. And Twitter made the decision, number one, to prevent users, any user, from sharing those stories. And number two, you went even further and blocked the New York Post from sharing on Twitter its own reporting. Why did Twitter make the decision to censor the New York Post? Uh, we had a hack materials policy. Um, that we when was that worked, policy adopted? Uh, in 2018, I believe. In 2018, go ahead. What was, what, what was the policy? So the policy is around um, limiting the spread of materials uh, that are hacked. Um, we didn't want Twitter to be a distributor for hack materials. Um, we found that the New York Post, because it showed the direct materials, screenshots of the direct materials, and it was unclear how those were attained, that it felt that it fell under this policy. Now, we, so in your view, if it's unclear the source of, uh, of a document, and in this instance, the New York Post documented what it said the source was, which it said it was a, uh, a laptop owned by Hunter Biden that had been turned into a re re repair store. So they weren't hiding what they claimed to be the source. Is it, Are, is it your position that Twitter, when you can't tell the source, blocks, blocks press stories? No, not at all. Um, we, our, our team made a fast decision. Uh, the enforcement action, however, of blocking URLs, both in tweets, and uh, in DM, in direct messages, we believe was incorrect. And we changed it. Today, right hours. now, the New York Post is still blocked from tweeting two weeks later. Yes, they have to log into their account, which they can do at this minute, delete the original tweet, which fell under our original enforcement actions. And they can tweet the exact same material in the exact same article, and it would go through so, Mr. Dorsey, your ability is you have the power to force a media outlet. Let's be clear. The New York Post isn't just some random guy 
tweeting, the New York Post has the fourth highest circulation of any newspaper in America. The New York Post is over 200 years old. The New York Post was founded by Alexander Hamilton. And your position is that, that you can sit in Silicon Valley and demand of the media that you can tell them what stories they can publish and you can tell the American people what reporting they can hear. Is that right? No, uh, this was this was a you know every person every account uh, every uh, organization that signs up to Twitter agrees to a terms of service. Uh, terms of service. Is so public. media outlets must genuflect and obey your dictates if they wish to be able to communicate with readers. Is that right? No, not at all. We you know we we recognize an error in this policy and specifically the enforcement. You're still blocking their posts. It. You're still blocking their posts. Right now, today, you're blocking their posts. We're not blocking the post. Anyone can tweet. The New York, can the New York Post uh, post on their, on their Twitter account? If they go into their account. No is your answer to that. No. no. Unless they, they and, and, and agree with your dictates. Let me ask you something. You, you claimed it was because of a hacked materials uh, policy. I find that facially... Uh, highly dubious and clearly employed in, in, in a deeply partial way. Did Twitter block the distribution of the New York Times story a few weeks ago that purported to be based on copies of President Trump's tax returns? We didn't find that a violation of our terms of service and this policy in particular because it was reporting about the material. It wasn't distributing okay. the material. Okay, well, that's actually not true. They, they posted what they purported to be original source materials, and federal law, federal statute makes it a crime, a federal felony, to distribute someone's tax returns against their knowledge. So that material was based on something that was distributed in violation of federal law, and yet Twitter gleefully allowed people to circulate that. But when the article was critical of Joe Biden, Twitter engaged in rampant uh, censorship and silencing. And again, we recognized errors in that policy. We we changed it within 24 hours. This is this but is. But you're still blocking the New York Post. You haven't changed it. We have changed it. They can log into their account, delete the original tweet. Uh, that was you forced the Politico reporter to take down his post about the New York Post as well. Is that correct? Within that 24-hour period, yes. But we, you know, as the policy has changed. Anyone can tweet. So the Twitter article. takes the view you can censor the New York Post, you can censor Politico, presumably you can censor the New York Times or any other media outlet. Mr. Dorsey, who the hell elected you and put you in charge of what the media are allowed to report and what the American people are allowed to hear? And why do you persist in behaving as a Democratic super PAC, silencing? views to the contrary of your political beliefs. Let, let's give uh, Mr. Dorsey uh, uh, a few seconds to answer that, and uh, then we'll have to conclude this this uh, segment. Well, we're, we're not doing that, uh, and this is why I opened um, this hearing with calls for more transparency. We realize we need to earn trust more. We realize that more accountability is needed to show our intentions and to show the outcomes. Thank um, you, so I, I hear the concerns and acknowledge them, but we want to fix it with more transparency.